Hello everyone. This new video is intended to present the new functionalities and tools of the recently uh, um, uh, uploaded version 4 of the R package uh, Climatol. Uh, the outlook of this uh, short presentation is why to choose Climatol, preparation of the input files, series homogenization, post-processing functions and graphic products to end with a conclusion. Uh, there are several well-known homogenization packages like Atman, this uh, Climatol, Homer and derivatives, MASH, RH, TEST, etc. with similar performances. So what would move a user to choose uh, Climatol? Well, its distinctive feature is its capability of using most series of your database, including those of short-lived stations whose missing data will be estimated, allowing the calculation of statistics and normal values useful for claim and monitoring. Uh, mm, this is a real example application for variable with a short name TXAC in 1960 to 2019. Uh, you can see this uh, is a real case with many, many variables, many, uh, sorry, many, many series, very short. For example, series number 52 here. Uh, to the right, after having uh, applied uh, the homogeneous function of the climatol package, you see that the original uh, data in black at the end of the period of study has been reconstructed backwards and you have a whole series. Uh, this uh, data have been estimated as a function of the data uh, around this, this station. And the same happens with all the other series. Well, the, the, in the format of the input files has not changed. It's the same as in the previous versions. There are only two files, which are plain text and separated by spaces. Uh, station coordinates, every line has the x, that would be longitude, not latitude, longitude, latitude mm, would be the y, uh, x, elevation, and uh, code of the station, and the name. Names, as they can have spaces in the name, they should be quoted. And uh, the coordinates must be in degrees uh, with, with decimals and elevations would be in meters. And the other, the other input file would be that of the data. Data would have uh, all data in, in the data blocks from the first station to the last in the same order as, as in the stations file. Uh, the number of, of items per line is indifferent. They uh, will be read uh, sequentially. But it's very important to have the data uh, in complete blocks. That means that every uh, station must have data from the first uh, data in, in, the, in the period to the last one using NA or other missing data code for, for any uh, missing data. Uh, there are, uh, if you want to, to use some help functions to build these input files, the previously existing functions are db 2 dat that creates input files directly from a database accessible through the ODBC protocol. daily to climatol if you have your, your data in, in individual station files. And arclindex to climatol that converts the data from arclindex files. And there are new helping functions that would be Ceph to Climatol that compiles the data from Ceph files, which is the um, format of, for the Copernicus Climate Change Service for data, data rescue projects. Uh, XLS to CSV that dumps data from individual Excel files into a single CSV file. And CSV file that converts data existing in single CSV file to the input uh, format required by Climatol. 
The call to the homogenization function is now very simple since only three parameters are needed. Uh, that would be the short name for the variable, first year and last year. The rest of parameters, and there are a lot of them, are guessed or have saved default values. However, users should revise the results and optionally run homogen again if they want to modify any parameter. An interesting novelty for daily precipitation is the possibility to disaggregate values accumulated during several days. A new initial quality control has been implemented in the homogen function showing for every series box plots of values, detecting and deleting uh, clear errors, differences between consecutive values and lengths of sequences with the same value. Alternatively to SNHT, the user can choose the Kukoni test to simultaneously detect changes in the mean and the variance, but only if reference series do not change a long time, because that would introduce spurious uh, variability in, in the sequence in the series of spatial anomalies that would be detected as, as inhomogeneities. Uh, this is an example for the homogenization of daily series. For example, in this case, following the same example previously exposed of the XAC daily series from 1960 to 2019, the recommended homogenization steps would be first to check the quality of the daily data with homogen, the name of the, of the variable that we have used first and last year, and using the parameter only QC equal true. Then uh, DD2M would be used to create the monthly aggregates that would be saved with the names, the same short name for the variable but adding a suffix M to not overwrite the, the, the daily uh, files. And then to homogenize the monthly series. Homogen, this time TXAC dash M 1960-2019. At this point, the user should revise the output graphics and optionally edit the breakpoint files to adjust the dates to the available metadata. Then, the last step would be to homogenize the daily series using the possibly edited monthly breakpoint list. For this, we would use again homogen TXAC 1960-2019 and using this time the parameter method equal true. And that would be the final uh, adjustment of the daily series. Uh, apart from the DASTAT to calculate various monthly statistics, trends and p-values, etc., and the grid to generate grids of normalized values in net, net CDF format, the new version adds other post-processing functions like uh, fixed sunshine to prune any excess of sunshine hours produced in adjusted daily series of this variable and QC thresholds to obtain for every daily or sub-daily series monthly quantiles of extreme values, of increments between consecutive values and of sequences of identical values. These quantiles uh, can be used mm, to implement quality control alerts in climate data management systems. So, uh, to end this presentation, I will present the graphic products. The former versions included two, two graphics that will be the, 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 the wind rows from wind direction and speed data, and the WL, uh, that's uh, for the water and lead diagram, uh, which is uh, made from daily and data of precipitation and extreme temperatures. It's, uh, I like this diagram very much because it's a synthesis of climate with a lot of information about monthly values, periods of, of um, humid and, and arid, arid or uh, dry, dry seasons, the maximum temperature of the, the, the average maximum temperature of the hottest uh, month, the average, the coldest uh, average uh, temperature of the coldest of the cold month. Uh, annual values of mean and temperature and total precipitation, etc., and periods of, of possible and, and sure frost. Uh, so, to these two um, graphic products, uh, the new version 4 adds a few more. Examples are these uh, 
two-dimensional scatter plot with colors indicated where um, values are, are superimposed and intensity duration frequency diagram from subdaily precipitation data the user can change the return periods uh, of, of his preferences uh, we have also run TND which uh, produces a diagram of running trends on time windows of different lengths here at the left we have here the last year of the, of the period and here the different lengths of, of the window chosen by, by the user uh, with uh, dots of white color are masking partially the values that are not significant with two different levels uh, but if you want, instead of looking at the, at the graphical scale unit here, you are interested in, in some mm, window of, of a constant length, instead of, of looking at, at the values here, reading in, in the scale, you can choose to have a plot of, of this series. That would be for the 30 year running trends at, at Oslo station. And in this case, the significance are. Uh, signed by increasing the width of, of the lines here and, and here and finally we have here the months hour isoplets in this case of temperature you have months in this axis hours in the other and you see the uh, daily and seasonal cycles of, of the variable with maximum values of course in, in the summer months and in the central hours of, of the day and, and uh, also to the right we have an, an example of a meteogram for one day automatic weather station data uh, we have at uh, the top um, graphic of uh, direction wind direction for averages in circles and the wind speed maximum wind speed in, in sorry in the direction of the gusts in red crosses in the second panel we have the speeds both average in 10 minutes and also the maximum gust third panel shows the plot of uh, the graph of temperature in red and relative humidity in green and the final fourth panel you have pressure in, in brown line and uh, in blue bars you have the precipitation well as a conclusion the varied features of this new climatolar package makes it very useful for many climatological practices and here you have some resources the mm, link to, to the package as it is published in, in the grant repository a web page where more frequent updates can be found because there are more than 10,000 packages and, and the maintainers ask not to uh, update them too frequently because that would be a, a huge uh, effort for, for managing the, the repository. And apart from, from more frequent updates, you have uh, user uh, guides and also links to, to these videos. And you have here also a patch for the a, a link to the page of multitest intercomparison which were published recently in the International Journal of Climatology. And that's all for this video. Many thanks for your attention. See you. Bye bye.